Hey guys, this is Saga from Techworks. In this video, let us compare the cameras of the Redmi Note 8 Pro with the ones on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and see how much of an improvement do we get. Now if you watched my camera review of the Redmi Note 7 Pro, you know that it had one of the best set of cameras at that price. So following that up with an even better set of cameras in itself was a big task even for Redmi. The Redmi Note 7 Pro had some major frame drop issues while shooting videos, but that was fixed with a few software updates. And the only other complaint that I had with it was the front facing camera, which did not really match up to the other cameras on that phone. And I would have been happy if Redmi would have fixed just these problems with the Note 8 Pro. But if you saw my dedicated camera review of the new Note 8 Pro, you know that Redmi did a lot more than that. So this is going to be a very interesting comparison. We have over 65 image and video samples to go through and I have a lot to talk about each and every one of them. So this video might be slightly longer. Keeping that in mind. Let us quickly check out the specifications of the cameras on both these phones. But before that, if you are new to this channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. That way, you won't miss out on any of the amazing videos coming up on this channel. Note 7 Pro came with a dual camera setup at the back. Out of which, the primary camera had a 48 megapixel sensor with f1.8 aperture and a normal 26 mm lens. Secondary camera had a 5 megapixel depth sensor with f2.4 aperture. You can't switch to the second camera. It is just there for sensing depth information for portrait shots. Note 8 Pro comes with a quad camera setup at the back. Main camera gets a 64 megapixel sensor with f1.9 aperture and a 26 mm lens. Second camera has a 8 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture and it gets a 13 mm ultra wide angle lens. Next is a 2 megapixel dedicated macro camera with f2.4 aperture. And finally, there is another 2 megapixel depth sensor with f2.4 aperture. Both can take 4K videos at 30 fps and 1080p videos at 30, 60, and 120 fps. Note 8 Pro can take 960 fps slow motion videos at 720p resolution. At the front, Note 7 Pro had a 13 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture, while the Note 8 Pro comes with a 20 megapixel sensor again with f2.0 aperture. Interface of the camera app is pretty similar on both the phones. Note 8 Pro just gets an additional lens selection button above the shutter button and a dedicated macro mode button towards the top. Both phones also get Pro mode where you can adjust various settings like white balance, focus, shutter speed and ISO according to your liking. Range for shutter speed on both the phones is from 1000th of a second all the way up to 32 seconds and the range for ISO is from 100 to 3200. With all of this out of the way, let us now get to the image and video samples. Starting with the daytime images. Both phones have captured a lot of details in these shots, but the image from the Note 8 Pro is a bit more pleasing and also captured actual colors of the sky. Both phones have very high resolution primary cameras and all the images they capture are extremely sharp. If we zoom in on these shots, we see the image from the Note 8 Pro showing slightly sharper and detailed images compared to the Note 7 Pro. I had the AI scene detection turned on on both the phones so depending on how both of them interpret the scene, we see a slight shift in color in these images. Overall colors and white balance is more accurate in the images from the Note 8 Pro, while the Note 7 Pro tends to make the images look a bit warmer. Note 8 Pro also has better contrast levels, so it feels like there is more depth in its images, while some of the images from the Note 7 Pro appear a bit flat in comparison. I like the overall colors coming out of the Note 8 Pro, but color is a personal choice and depending on your color preference, you might like one over the other and it is perfectly fine. Coming to the dynamic range. If you look at these images individually, both of them have done a wonderful job with this HDR shot. It is when we compare them side by side, we see the image from the Note 8 Pro showing much better colors and slightly more details in the darker areas. You can definitely see more noise in Note 8 Pro's image when you have zoomed in so far. But normally, we look at images this way and from this far away to my eyes, image from the Note 8 Pro looks better. That was about the shadows. In this shot, we get to see which one does better with the highlights. You can see the sun is behind the clouds in this shot. But the Note 7 Pro completely blew up the highlights to a point where you can barely make out any details in the clouds. Whereas the Note 8 Pro handles the brighter parts of the image really well 
and you can see the clouds and the silver lining clearly. The dynamic range on both the phones is good enough that I was comfortable leaving the auto HDR option on for all of the following shots. Note 8 Pro is noticeably faster at setting and switching the focus from one object to another. So this works in its favor while you are trying to take close up shots. Subject is sharp in these shots from both the phones and they have a wide aperture so the background is also blurred out very nicely. While talking about colors, I mentioned that there is a bit more contrast in the images from the Note 8 Pro and due to that reason, images from it seem to have a bit more depth in them. Because the extra contrast helps create a bit of separation between the background and the foreground which looks really nice in these close up shots. On the Note 8 Pro, you also have a dedicated macro lens which means you can get much closer to your subject and take amazingly sharp macro shots like these. Note 7 Pro and many other cameras which don't have dedicated macro mode just can't set the focus while being so close to a subject. So if you are a macro photographer, you already know which one to get. Both phones use pixel binning to give you 16 and 12 megapixel images from their native 64 and 48 megapixel sensors respectively. But if you want to take higher resolution images, you have the option of switching to the 64 megapixel mode on the Note 8 Pro and 48 megapixel mode on the Note 7 Pro. These images capture a lot of details but you need to zoom in very deep to see the difference in the details that these phones capture. It might not be clear straight away but the 64 megapixel images from the Note 8 Pro are sharper than the 48 megapixel images from the Note 7 Pro. These images are huge in terms of file size so I suggest using this mode only while you are trying to capture architecture and landscape and avoid using these modes when you are in less than ideal light because these modes don't use pixel binning so the size of each individual pixel is very small and they have hard time capturing enough light. So the phone has to crank up the ISO to add in more light digitally making the image look very noisy. The Note 8 Pro also gets a dedicated ultra wide angle lens which helps you get more of the scene in your shot. This wide camera does not produce as good images as the primary one but it is still nice to have it just so you have the option of capturing a different perspective of any scene. There is also a 2x button in the viewfinder on the Note 8 Pro but you don't have a 2x lens so when you press this button, the phone will just zoom in on the image that is being captured by the main camera. I don't know about you guys but I love taking portrait mode images with my smartphones. This is the easiest way to make your images feel special and make them stand out from the others. When done right, both these phones are capable of taking amazing portrait shots. Since both of them have dedicated depth sensor, edge detection is really good on both. The subject appears a lot softer in the portrait shots from the Note 7 Pro. This was not the case when I was using the Note 7 Pro when it first came out. So it makes me wonder, is Redmi deliberately messing up the camera on the Note 7 Pro with software updates after the Note 8 Pro has come along? If you are a Note 7 Pro user, have you noticed any change in the camera performance since last one or two software updates? If yes, then I would like to hear more about it from you in the comment section. We can take portrait shots of objects as well and the edge detection is near perfect even when the object has complex edges. Again, I noticed the main subject of the shot being a bit softer in the portraits from the Note 7 Pro. So is Redmi really lowering the camera performance of the Note 7 Pro with software updates? Or are the cameras on the Note 8 Pro so good that same images that we thought were amazing 6 months back are now appearing to be a bit softer in comparison? I really hope it is the second case. Moving on to indoor, artificial and lower lighting conditions. Both these phones hold on to most of the details but the Note 8 Pro captures noticeably more noise than the Note 7 Pro in these lower lighting conditions which is interesting. We can switch to the night mode and both will give much better looking images with less noise and now if we zoom in, Note 8 Pro has less noise in these images compared to the Note 7 Pro. Moving to even lower lighting situations, Note 8 Pro's images show much better and natural looking colors while the AI scene detection on the Note 7 Pro tends to shift its colors to make the image look a bit cooler. But the actual color of the lights were more like we see from the Note 8 Pro. Image from the Note 7 Pro is brighter but when we zoom in, you can see the Note 8 Pro has managed to capture much more details in its image. You will find a similar trend in most of the low light images. In some cases, when the Note 8 Pro shows more noise in darker parts, switching to the night mode makes all of that go away, resulting in a much better looking overall shot. That brings us to the front facing cameras. It is no surprise that the 20 megapixel camera on the Note 8 Pro takes detailed and sharper selfies than the 13 megapixel camera on the Note 7 Pro. As I mentioned at the start of the video, selfie camera is not the strong suit of the Note 7 Pro and I am glad that the Note 8 Pro improved on that. Portrait selfies are also better from the Note 8 Pro. Both of them do a very good job of accurately detecting the edges and separating the subject from background. 
but the actual image is much sharper and detailed in the selfies from the Note 8 Pro even if you have multiple people in the shot. So if you take a lot of selfies, you should just go with the Redmi Note 8 Pro. Here's a video from the front facing camera of the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Redmi Note 8 Pro. You can see how both these phones are handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I'm walking around with them. Note 7 Pro had major frame drop issues while shooting videos when it first came out. But Redmi managed to fix them to a large extent with a few software updates. And now when we compare the 1080p videos from both the phones, I think Note 7 Pro is doing better with the exposure, detail levels and overall quality of the video. Both can shoot unstabilized 4K 30fps videos and they just look okay. You can add a bit of stabilization via the editor in Google Photos app and the same videos now look really good. Both of them are just average video shooters at best. So if video is your main concern, I would ask you to look at some of the other better options in the market. So after checking out over 65 image and video samples for comparing the cameras on both these phones, it is safe to say that the Note 8 Pro is clearly better in almost all conditions. Note 7 Pro is slightly better in lower light if you haven't turned on the night mode. But in every other scenario, Note 8 Pro comes on top. So if you are looking to get the best set of cameras in under 15,000 rupees, go with the Redmi Note 8 Pro. But if you already have the Note 7 Pro, I will not suggest you to upgrade to the Redmi Note 8 Pro. Your phone is just about 6 months old and it can still take some amazing images, so hold on to your phone for another 5-6 to six months and then think about upgrading to the Note 9 Pro which will most definitely have even better set of cameras than the Note 8 Pro. These have been my thoughts about the cameras on both these phones. But what do you guys think about them, do let me know in the comments. And if you don't agree with my views about these images, you can go back, mute the video, watch it in the highest resolution that your device supports and draw your own conclusions that way. If you do end up liking these phones and if you are planning to get one of them, I will really appreciate if you get them from the affiliate links in the description section. You don't have to pay anything extra for that, but I get a tiny commission which helps me make these detailed videos for you guys. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.